So let's move on to the VMware configuration. Uh, we've actually added a few VMs, uh, so just to make it more of a realistic environment, I'm going to open the ESX host up. And you can see we have a few sample VMs here. We have an Active Directory a controller, a GHCP server, and a traffic generator. So um, what I wanted to do was show you what the networking configuration will look like when we're done, uh, explain some things about how it works, and then we'll actually walk through and create it ourselves. So first thing is to, uh, you, you want to do is make sure uh, you've selected the ESX server here. Go to the Configuration tab. Uh, go to Networking, and you'll see the... Uh, the various virtual switches. So this is really the, the main configuration that we have to do within ESX. And so uh, just a few things about uh, this, this uh, configuration here. Uh, VMware has a, a concept called a, a virtual switch. Uh, virtual switches will map uh, VMs to physical interfaces. There's also a concept of port groups, and I'll explain all that stuff. But I, I would say the bottom line here is that uh, you need to create uh, virtual switches to map VMs to uh, to physical interfaces. So there are three switches here. The first switch is known as vSwitch0. You'll notice that uh, it's mapped with a, a physical interface here and there's only one uh, I would say VM. It's not really a VM but it's, it's a service. It's called the service console and this is really the main method or, or one of the main ways of managing the ESX server. It's basically an older distribution of Red Hat Linux, and uh, it's it's used uh, to to do a lot of system administration. It's highly recommended that you not uh, associate any VMs on vSwitch Zero, mainly for security reasons. So the service console should have its own dedicated physical interface to the outside world. Uh, the next switch here is vSwitch One, and you'll note that uh, that there are two VMs associated with this vSwitch. There's virtual, there's a DC, and a 3D sensor. So so basically the uh, and you'll notice here there's a port group called Management Network. So the this switch here is used to uh, f mainly for management traffic. So as the DC and the sensor talk with each other, they're doing so via uh, this port group or via this uh, this virtual switch. And if the defense center needs to talk with other sensors somewhere out on the network, it will do so via this physical NIC, this VM NIC 5. The last uh, virtual switch here to talk about is vSwitch 2. And this is really the main switch that you are connecting your, your VMs to, your standard server VMs. One interesting note here is we've actually divided this virtual switch into two different port groups. The main port group is called server network. The other port group is called promiscuous monitoring. So we tried, I tried to make these names as, as straightforward as possible. But basically, this in this port group, uh, you've just uh, you've grouped your various, uh, your various VMs that you're just going to do main things with. This other port group here, I call it promiscuous monitoring because you've actually set this port group to what's called promiscuous mode. And that's why the virtual sensor belongs to this port group. So any time that there's any traffic on any of these VMs here in this other port group called server network, all that traffic is mirrored to this, uh, this promiscuous port group. And that's why it's important to have a promiscuous port group. Now, you don't want, though, to have all of these servers as members of this promiscuous port group because that's a huge security issue because you don't want to mirror promiscuous traffic to all of these different VMs. You only want to mirror that traffic to uh, the virtual sensor. So that's the reason why you divide your uh, virtual switch into two different port groups. Another uh, important note is that you can actually use your virtual sensor to monitor physical traffic. So you notice here this uh, this virtual switch is mapped to VMNIC2, which is a physical interface. If I actually connect VMNIC2 to a physical span port or to a physical tap to the outside world, then as traffic is sent to this NIC, uh, it's actually going to be mirrored to this promiscuous port group, and therefore my virtual sensor can see that physical span traffic or physical tap traffic. So that's just a, another interesting application of a virtual sensor where you can use it to monitor physical traffic. So now that we've actually walked through these virtual switches, I'm going to go and, and wipe this out and walk through the process of, of creating it from scratch. So we start off here again at the splash screen. So once again, just make sure you've selected your ESX server. Uh, go to configuration. Uh, go to networking. And this is the default configuration where everything, all of your VMs belong to the VM network port group. and uh, uh, like I said, this is a security issue, so we want to make sure that we add extra switches and uh, don't 
uh, have any VMs also share this physical network with the service console. So the first step is to add a virtual switch for management traffic for the DC and the sensor. So just go to add networking here. Keep this the same. And uh, you want to create uh, or associate this virtual switch with the uh, physical NIC used for management traffic. In this case, it's VM NIC 5, so you want to check this off, uncheck that. Give it a new name. We're going to call it Management Network. And finish. We'll also add another switch. Let's go back to Add Networking. And this is uh, going to be used for your standard uh, server VM traffic. Uh, we're also, okay, so the uh, this is another physical NIC we're going to associate this with. So create another virtual switch. This time we VM NIC 2 instead of 0 or 5. And we're going to call this uh, server network. And hit finish. You may recall that this switch actually had two different port groups on it, so we're going to go and add that second port group now. So there's a couple ways of doing it. I'm going to do it by going back to add networking. And here, instead of creating another virtual switch, I'm going to specify an existing switch, which is vSwitch2. Hit next. And uh, specify port groups. So you'll note that um, if you add a port group to an existing switch, um, you'll now have two port groups. So this will be called promiscuous monitoring. Finish. And the next step is to actually enable a promiscuous mode for this port group here. So I'm going to go to properties. Uh, make sure that you've selected the uh, promiscuous monitoring port group here. You'll note here that promiscuous mode is currently set to reject, so we want to change that. Click Edit, uh, Security, check this so you can change it and make that accept. Now it's set to accept. You want to verify that this other port group here for standard VM traffic is set to reject, which means that um, VMs on this port group won't be mirroring traffic to each other. So that's the case, so you want to hit Close. And now that you've created your switches and port groups, you want to assign your VMs to them. So I'm just going to go down the list here. I'll start with the Defense Center here. So I'm going to click on that and right click, do Edit Settings. Specify your network adapter. You'll know it's, it's on VM Network, so you want to change that to uh, Management Network. Uh, one very important thing to, to note here is that uh, Device Status, uh, these options are both checked, which means that the NIC will be uh, connected and also be powered up when the, the VM is turned on. Um, sometimes these are not enabled by default, so you want to make sure that these are both checked off here. Otherwise, you won't have network connectivity. So I hit OK. I want to now uh, configure my, my sensor, NICs, edit settings. The virtual sensor comes with four uh, interfaces by default. Uh, the first one is used for the management traffic, uh, so change that to management network. Uh, the second one is used for monitoring, so you want to make that promiscuous monitoring. The third and the fourth interfaces right now are not being used. Uh, you can actually uh, use these interfaces to, to monitor other switches if you want, um, but you do want to make sure that you take them out of the VM network port group because that's where the service console belongs. So for now, we'll just uh, add these to the promiscuous monitoring port group, and then we can always uh, have them monitor other uh, switches in the future. So change that here. And then you want to add your remaining three VMs to your server uh, try your server network port group, so I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, while I'm doing this, it's just very important um, to note that it can be fairly uh, easy to add your VMs to the wrong uh, port group simply by, by making a mistake in, in this part here. So you just want to pay attention and, and make sure that um, you, you keep your, your port group names uh, in order, or I guess straight as you're assigning them to your various VMs. Uh, so the last step is to go back to the main networking screen. I uh, just want to verify that everything is, is correct. So the service console is the only, uh, uh, there's the, or there's no VMs attached to this, uh, this switch here. That the uh, management switch here is only uh, used for the DC and the sensor. Uh, the server network port group here has your, your server VMs here. And your promiscuous monitoring group only has your sensor attached. So everything is in order here. Uh, so the next step here is to then log into your Defense Center via the uh, the web browser uh, and do all your standard source fire specific configurations such as your licenses, uh, your 
uh, your your detection engines, your your policy application, those sort of things. 